when it comes to collecting, I feel like there are very few things that are quite as demanding and space consuming as Lego. So today I thought I would give you a breakdown of all of my favorite things that I believe are quite essential to Lego collecting. Often when I post a video or a photo on Instagram, there'll be a lot of comments and questions asking where I got my display stands from or what furniture I have or what glass doors and display cases and all that type of thing. So I thought I would give you guys a breakdown. If you want to see though, a more in-depth look at my room and I guess a lot of my collection, I did make a room tour a couple of months ago. However, today I just want to talk exclusively about the pieces of furniture that I bought, the types of display things that I buy, as well as just my Lego parts storage as that recently has gotten a very big upgrade. So firstly, I'll start with how I display my Lego and what furniture I use for that. I mean, Lego just takes up so much space, especially with Lego's trends of tending to make the sets larger, which is something I've talked about a lot on this channel. You really have to sit down and consider now where these sets are going to go. I mean, for a while, I would often just buy a set and not really think about where I was going to put it until after I had built it. And that is something that I certainly, firstly, shouldn't have done in the first place and definitely do not do anymore just because of how much space this stuff takes up. I don't have unlimited wall space. I don't have unlimited shelves. I also still live with my parents so I only really have my bedroom in order to display stuff and while hopefully one day I will save enough money to buy myself a house and be able to have a very beautiful Lego room and Lego wall of display cases for now I've really got to stick to just a couple of things here and there. Now with Lego displays if you really want to go and throw a ton of money away you could I guess go and get those like professional style display cases that are pre-lit and just really big and full of glass and have locks but most people People don't really want to do that so we're gonna have a look at my best friend Ikea. Now me and my family have gone through a quite a bit of Ikea furniture I feel like over the years and some of my favorite things in order to display Lego are firstly the Billy bookcases. This is my number one buy for Lego collecting. I have seen it with a ton of other people's collections. In fact I specifically looked up cases where Lego fans had bought the Billy bookcases before purchasing mine and got directed to Brixie's and I absolutely loved it. I mean these days he has an entire wall full of Billy bookcases and that is something that I would love to have. It is the best piece of furniture I feel like for Lego displaying. Admittedly, it doesn't quite have the depth. However, you can fit a whole baseline on it. It is the one piece of furniture that I will always recommend to my friends. It is so versatile and I have seen it in so many of my friends' collections and that is purely because it is the best display piece. Now, I personally bought mine in black and that is something that I do regret a lot of the time. I personally wish I had gotten the white ones as I feel like majority of sets do show up a little bit better, but I guess in the context text of my room, black was really the best choice since it ties into a lot of other furniture I have. Now with the Billy bookcase as well, there is a lot of customization that you can have. I mean, there are ones that are skinnier and look a lot thinner, which personally I have seen this like Lord of the Rings display using those thinner ones as well as the regular sized ones, which looks fantastic and honestly is one of the reasons I went and bought this bookcase. But secondly is just the fact that you can put doors on it if you really wanted to, which in my case I wanted to have something that was mostly, you know, kind of dust free. It's not completely dust proof. I mean, I could go and weather strip it if I really wanted to, but that's something that I don't really feel like I need as it keeps out a lot of dust that I only really have to touch it up or dust it once a year at this point. Now the doors I ended up going for were called the Oxberg doors and there is a version where there's like a wooden panel at the bottom. Personally, I just got glass all the way up and I didn't actually put the handles on mine either. They came with like these small little round like knob handles that I just personally didn't like. I was like, look, I'll buy my own hardware from Bunnings Warehouse or another hardware store if I really want to put handles on it but otherwise I just sort of like reach up the top and like hook it open. Now another thing with the Billy bookcases as well is because they are so cheap you can really go and DIY them if you want. So one thing that I would really love to do if I ever get like my full room is just put a bunch of strip lights through the entire basically thing of bookcases. Now I could go and do this with the one that I have right now however I installed this like way before I thought about putting lights in and since you have to bolt it to the wall which is something Thing to think about. I covered up like the PowerPoint right behind it. So in order to get the lights put in, I just bought some like cheap sticky ones from like Kmart or Amazon or whatever, and just basically stuck it to the inside of the door so that I have lights in my bookcase and can light it up. But it's really not the most efficient system. I would recommend just like cutting a hole out with like a hardware tool or whatever. I don't even know what tool would do that. I'm kind of proficient in tools, but clearly not enough. As then you can have the whole system automated if you want to by using some smart lighting or you can just buy some cheap LED strips like I did and basically you will be able to light up the thing and make it look really professional and really, really cool. Secondly, for display shelves, I absolutely love my Kallax unit. Now this one I have had for many, many years. It has gone through many iterations in my bedroom from just being just a casual book 
bookshelf to a storage thing and now a really nice Lego display. One thing that I really like about it is that it's a lot deeper so I can put some of those larger sets on top of it and while sometimes things might hang off in the case of the Hogwarts castle or even I'm pretty sure Rivendell if that was to go on top of one of these units would kind of hang off a little bit but for the most part it is a really really nice shelf to put those really big sets on. Outside of that it is quite deep. Now the way you're supposed to build it is to have these sort of little cube things but if you really wanted to make it just a bunch of rectangles you could do that too. It doesn't have a backing like the Billy bookcase which is a little bit annoying but you could always DIY it by putting some MDF on the back or even like a cloth. I know I did that with like some felt on another Calyx unit that there is in the house but one thing I love about the Calyx and similarly to the Billy bookcase as well is that because they are pretty standard and well known and just well loved Ikea products there are a lot of display companies that will specially make products in order to fit in them. Some of the brands that I have found that have made specific display stands for either the Billy bookcase or the Calyx unit are firstly tricked out bricks as well as wicked brick. Oftentimes they will have things specifically built for it which is something that personally I love as a big fan of Ikea. I've got a couple of the wicked brick stands. I know I've got the Billy bookcase one as well as the Calyx minifigure stands and even just some of the wicked brick tier stands. I absolutely love them and another unit actually from Ikea that you can get stuff like this made for is the Deltoff unit. Personally I don't really love these all that much. I've never bought one. I've never built one. I've seen them on display a couple of times and specifically with like Hot Toys collectors. They look really cool but for me I don't think I could put that much stuff in it that it would be worth me buying. Also they like feel a little bit short like I would much rather have the Calyx unit personally. This is just a favorite of mine. I really like it and those are really my two main Lego display units but out of the two I would definitely go with the Ikea Billy bookcase if you are looking for something just as a nice shelf or even better if you want like a glass free display to keep out your pets or to keep out dust or whatever it is just to protect your sets that is the one that I would choose. The second aspect I want to talk about is again going back to like the display cases and the display stands and those types of things. Now there are three main brands that I really think of when it comes to like Lego displays. The first one is Wicked Brick, secondly is I Display It, and the third is Tricked Out Bricks which I feel like is more of a newer one which from my knowledge they seem to be US based and are probably the fastest to ship out of them second to I Display It and then there is Wicked Brick. Now Wicked Brick personally I really love the stuff that they do for the Ikea stuff. Again it is really like built for that. I love their minifigure displays and that some of their display cases as well look really cool. However they are based in the UK so shipping is really really expensive. However I really really like their product designs. They just take a really long time and again shipping is the big killer. I display it as well do some amazing cases. They don't quite have that same backdrop a lot of the time but they are a lot easier to assemble. They are a lot quicker to ship as well but again shipping can be quite expensive. However I do believe that they have a warehouse in the US so if you live in the US or Europe you should be lucky with them. I have a couple of their minifigure things which are just nice to just to organize my minifigures or have them standing somewhere and I feel like there was a little bit more care taken with like stress fractures and things like that since the plates actually have holes in them so you don't have to worry about putting expensive minifigures on there. However their display cases are a little bit more standard than the Wicked Brick ones. Personally I really love their stands though I think they're fantastic. And lastly there is Tricked Out Bricks who I've also seen do stuff for the IKEA Calyx unit and they've got a couple of display stands and seem to be working on a couple of custom cases. Personally I haven't tried out this brand yet but I mean for the most part a lot of these types of companies are exactly the same so that is another option if you haven't heard of them already. Now that you've got your collection on display you really need to think about how you want to dust it so again I would recommend getting something with doors ideally however I also kind of like the way just a set sits on the shelf without glass or a giant box behind it. I don't know I have a thing about that so a lot of the time I will have to spend time dusting my sets. In fact I did it yesterday and it was a little bit of a pain and for me I use a mix of different things. I use a mix of plain makeup brushes just to like get the dust off especially out of little nooks that I can't quite reach. Also just like an old sock or a wipe to wipe over the counters and then the next thing that I use quite often is my tiny little keyboard vacuum. You may have heard people talking about this thing called like a clean my bricks vacuum. Basically that's just like a glorified keyboard vacuum. 
I got this off Amazon. It's fantastic. I have to clean it quite regularly though. Like it's clogged up with dust right now. It's really only made for like light dusting rather than heavy dusting, which is the reason that this thing is an absolute mess. But I'll leave this linked in the description. It is fantastic for cleaning off your Lego. I haven't found that it leaves like any tiny scratches on the bricks or anything like that. And it's really good just to go over something quickly and just really give it a little bit of a touch up. Just don't do it on sets that have a really thick dust coating. For that, I would recommend looking at the Dyson head attachment if you have one of like those stick handheld vacuums. They have like this dusting tool thing which is something that I really want to get and try out. It looks fantastic. I can't really speak to it though because I haven't tested it out but just judging by Dyson's other vacuuming products, I mean I vacuum my shelf sometimes with that tiny vacuum. It's fantastic. So maybe that's something to look into but again I can't really speak to it and recommend it because I haven't tried it. Alright now let's talk about parts. Now parts storage is something that I have struggled with for years. When I was a kid I used to store all of like my broken down sets and all of my just loose parts by color into giant bins and when I went to go and rebuild these sets it was an absolute nightmare. I do not wish that experience on anyone. I hated it. I did it throughout COVID because literally I had nothing else to do because I was trapped inside. So it made sense to sort through and build all of my sets. I will never do that again. I will always recommend sort by piece. Sort by piece first because then it is a lot more practical when you are going to search for things. Admittedly, it is kind of hard just because of how many different pieces there are. So often you'll kind of have to group random bits and pieces in and honestly it could would potentially take up a little bit more space. However, sorting by piece is going to be so much easier. Now, in terms of what storage to use, I feel like there are two main methods when it comes to sorting out your pieces. The first is using like tiny drawers. I know that one I often see on the Lego storage subreddit is like Acro Mills or whatever. They don't have that in Australia. Personally, I just went to like Spotlight, or a craft store and bought tiny little craft drawers. Now those can be pretty good. However, personally, it was something that I didn't really like. I found it really hard to just like sort of place and they were often on the floor or just like sitting next to pieces of furniture and they didn't really have proper space. I mean, if you have a table and you can put them on top of the table, I can imagine it would be absolutely fantastic. And again, allow you to put like a ton of pieces into these tiny drawers and really separate out your collection. And if you have a ton of parts of like one color or one piece or whatever, those larger drawers are gonna be really helpful. But I ditched that system just cause of the drawers I bought were hard to open. It was really hard to find a place to put the pieces so I ended up going again the Ikea route and bought the Alex drawers. Now these things are fantastic. Firstly, I get yeah, I've seen a lot of my friends use them. I know Tiago, who is a Lego designer, uses them. Even the Lego designers in Denmark go and use these drawers. So, you know, if, if they're all using them, why shouldn't I? And these drawers are fantastic. They are really big, they are really deep, they can sit under a desk. You can use them as like the legs of your table or whatever, which really was the big win for me because it meant that I could store them and have them sort of tucked away, looking really neat, looking really clean. I can't see any of the pieces and they or a piece of furniture. So again, it looks really, really nice. And that was really the big selling point for me. Secondly, you had to find a ton of containers to put inside them. In Australia, personally for the bottom drawers, I got these like kitchen tubs from Kmart, which are fantastic. They have little rubber feet and they fit perfectly in these drawers. However, for the smaller drawers, I had a couple more issues. I had to do a lot of measurements and there was quite a lot of options that I found on Amazon that might have worked. And I feel like probably fit in there pretty well without having too much extra space. I also know the container store do some really good ones that I found. I think it's called just like the fits everywhere drawer. But again, in Australia, we don't have a container store. So recently, actually, my mom went to Bunnings and found a bunch of these tiny little containers. I just bought tons of them. I bought far more than I needed. And I actually ended up needing a lot of smaller ones rather than larger ones. But they came in a ton of different sizes and just like tiny containers like this are perfect. These ones didn't have little rubber feet, which I feel like is something you should probably look for when buying tiny containers to sort your Lego parts and put in these drawers. However, these are fantastic and have made my Lego collection just feel a lot nicer feel a lot more practical and just look so much cleaner. I am really, really happy with the space that I have made. And if you have a ton of loose parts or you want to get into mocks, or even if you want to own a Brickling store, this is something that personally I would recommend. Maybe not so much for the Brickling store part, but just for like mock building and general parts sorting, just getting one of these drawers, whether it be the smaller one or the bigger one. I really, really, really recommend these drawers. And also again, it's Ikea, so it's not super expensive. And then lastly is storage tubs. Now I feel like every single store 
store has a different storage tub solution. Basically, just go to one store, pick a system, and then only buy containers from that system because it really is important to either break down your sets or just store them away. I really like to just recycle the things that are on my shelves so that I get a different chance to display different parts of my collection when I'm going through different phases. Like right now, I'm really in a Disney mood. Like just the Disney revival of the Disney 100 sets has made me really excited for that theme and just all of the various things that we've gotten throughout the years, which luckily I guess is pretty scarce. However, my love for Marvel is just like completely just like disappeared. So instead of having Marvel on display, I've been rotating things out and having Disney on display. So I'll put all those Marvel sets in a storage container and just shut them away so that dust doesn't get on them. They stay clean and hopefully they stay organized. So don't be afraid to just rotate things out on your shelves. You don't have to display everything. And a lot of the time it is better to have less on display than super cluttered shelves where you can't see anything. So do keep that in mind and be smart with your collecting as well as your displaying. But those are all of my essentials for Lego collecting. I mean, at the end of the day, you got to do what works best for you. But since I get a lot of questions about this type of thing, I thought I would recap all of my favorite Lego things. I'll also leave links for all of the Ikea furniture down below since Ikea names are really hard to spell a lot of the time so that you can find it if you're interested in this stuff. The only real thing that I guess I can't recommend is like a type of wall shelf because I personally don't really have any. But I hope that this could help your collecting as well as your Lego displaying. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel down below. And until next time, I'll see you later.